Tales find unicorns in the Philippines. And it's funny, I didn't even know what a unicorn was till the other, till the other day uh, when somebody mentioned it relating to my wife. Um, my wife is... I've got to say, we went into the relationship in the right way in the first place. First thing is, we didn't suddenly just get into this. We communicated online uh, for nine months before we even met in person. Then... Um, Things did go a bit faster, but by that time we were already fairly familiar with each other. But we were, we committed to each other in this terms that marriage was for life, and that was it. Um, it wasn't a, oh, we're going to get married and we'll see how things go. Because that's what boyfriend and girlfriend's for. If you're going to get married, it should be a lifelong commitment, and it should be understood from both parties. You're not going to allow them to divorce. Um, because the, my whole point is, I'm not religious. But a marriage contract has a contractual obligation. As such, it should be treated that way, whether you're religious or not. You can you should say, you know, that you're committed to it. You're committed to making this happen. Um, because if you're not, this is why so many marriages are failures. Because quite simply, people go in half-hearted. You get people go, oh, well, I'll just have a visa or whatever. I think you can say, you know what? You may think that, but I'll tell you now, I'm not even going to let you divorce me. I'll make it really awkward because at the end of the day, this is not why we got into a relationship for you to have a visa or a passport or whatever. It's for marriage. It's for commitment. If you're not ready for that, fine, don't. I'm not, I'm not locking somebody into this. It's, it's a case of got to have the commitment or not have the commitment. Boyfriend, girlfriend, fine. Um... And I think that's part of the communication is you've got to go in before you get to the point where you're thinking about even that lifelong commitment is to actually sit there and go, well, it is lifelong, whether you like it or not, because you've got to take that at, at day one as a commitment, because if you're sort of like, well, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. That's not how a relationship should be going, going into. That's like I said, that's boyfriend, girlfriend material stuff. Um, so our commitment is lifelong commitment, which is may seem a bit, a bit bizarre for a lot of people, but that's why 50% or whatever relationships fail. Uh, marriages fail because people don't go in with that commitment. They don't stay together through thick and thin. Um, the other thing is in the Philippines, you've got access to a lot more, um, women as such. I do recommend not marrying or getting committing to the first woman you meet because a lot of guys have met this wonderful, beautiful woman that's really interested in them. And as somebody mentioned a while back, he was out um, sitting on the, a pier somewhere. I can't remember what he was doing. But he dropped something he dropped his keys or something and this girl just dived in and went and got his keys for him and he's like oh this is the woman i want to be with well i'm not being funny why did you marry the other woman then you haven't made the commitment you're still out shopping the philippines is full of beautiful women if you're not interested in getting married and making the same level of commitment that you can get out of somebody then don't get married. Simple as that. And this is getting back to, you don't always need to get married as well, but because you're also going over there from wherever, the legal obligations are pretty non-existent. Just don't buy a house. Rent is cheap anyway. Um, if you can work offshore, do. Um, you will find that you can actually have relationships without a lot of the pitfalls that you'll get in the West. Um, you're not looking over your shoulder. But I would say spend some time meeting real people. Don't get involved in the the lower, lower classes. Um, I know a lot of guys do end up with people that are from um, harder lives, let's just call it that. But the, the reason I, I'm not a fan of that is quite simply from a education and informed point of view. Um, 
the education often isn't even up to secondary school. The education is often localised, so they don't know a lot from outside their own village, country, or whatever. But it depends on you. You know, if that you're happy with that, that's fine. But I personally haven't got the time of day for people that can go on the internet for six hours on Facebook, yet haven't even updated them uh, themselves on localized news in the sense of look even even watching the news you know on their own tv just to see um whether it's been a fire or something you know even just general news i'm not talking about political news then there's a problem you know at the end of the day i couldn't spend some time with somebody who's got no nothing beyond um daytime tv i can't do it it drives me nuts i get some people email me um they go oh I'm looking for a husband, blah, blah. I was like, you know, I mean, I'm not being funny. I'm married. I'm not interested. Um, but you still get these same things. You know, they don't even bother. If they go into your Facebook, they could see your profile. It says you're married. You've got pictures of your kids and stuff. And they're still not even smart enough to even look and just go, oh, yeah, he's married. Okay. They just start talking as if like, oh, how are you? Um, are you single? Blah, blah, blah. Guess what? Go and do your own research. It's right in front of you. It's not hard to see. Um, so yeah, the, the, there is issues with some, some people. But there's a lot of smart women out there. That's the thing. But you're more likely to meet um, the wrong type of girl, especially early on, than the right one. Because the right ones go to work. The right ones... Um, are fairly independent and often responsible for some of their family and stuff. So they'll work, they'll look after the family, they'll look after um, the family group. Doesn't mean you have to get into that commitment side of it, which some guys seem to wander into. Um, you don't have to do that, that's all, this is the thing. You don't have to do anything. When people say your culture, you have to accept our culture. You'll say, yeah, but it's my money. And I'm not your 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 relative. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's some, some of it you've got to kick back on. But generally those women, they, they work, um, have a higher level of education, travel a little bit as well, which makes a difference because they also, because Try not to get into too many scenarios where I can actually highlight people and people know who I'm talking about. Um, but a friend of mine, for example, he started dating his maid because um, she used to come around and clean his house and then she eventually lived in cleaning the house. Then he started dating and one thing led to another and then he got sick of her because she wouldn't even clean the house now that she was the girlfriend. She thought that was now somebody else's job. Um, but that's the sort of thing I'm talking about. If somebody hasn't got an education ability behind them, I've got to admit, I've got no interest. Um, especially if they won't further their education. Uh, what do I mean? Well, with my call center, there's over 300 books and hardly anybody reads them. There is a lot of audio books. There's a lot of um, training courses and stuff. Hardly anybody ever used them. Um, there's a couple of, I mean, I'm happily married anyway, but there was, if somebody said to me, what sort of woman would I recommend for somebody? I could actually recommend several women that worked in the call center because they were forward thinking, smart women, educating women. Um, they put themselves out there to learn new things. Uh, some of them are fairly well skilled. I mean, if I look at, um, Eileen, Eileen's just, I think she's just about to finish qualifying as a pharmacist. She was already doing a computer programming course and then she's moved on to pharmacy. But the, the point being is there is educated women out there, but you'll see a lot of the negativity on the Philippines genre will say that all the women are stupid or whatever. In the same way, the MGTOW gets attacked by a feminist or whatever. The reality is, do what you want. You know, at the end of the day, you're not bothering anybody. You're not harming anybody. 
If you want to stay on your own or whatever, that's fine. But I do recommend, even if you went from a social aspect into Asia, well, I say predominantly Philippines, people are far more friendly. Um, I find it more friendly than Spain, for example. Spain can be a bit hit and miss. Um, in La Mata, it's like a village. People are pretty good there. But other places, you may not, you can move there um, and people hardly speak to you. I mean, it took a while for people here to, you know, where in our community to talk to each other. You get a hello, but it's not, I have no idea who anybody is because that conversation stops at hello. Uh, Philippines, people start talking, they want, you know, they want to introduce you to their relatives, etc. invite you around for dinner. I find it a much, much more friendly environment. But like I said, Spain's not that bad. I mean, it's not like it's a threatening environment or um, people dislike you or anything. It's just that it's people are sort of just doing their own thing. Um, but in the Philippines, you can go pretty much anywhere and people will talk to you. Um, which also means that if you're retired or something, if you haven't got a lot of family members or you live away from them, you may be better off in the Philippines. From a social aspect, you'll have a lot more people talking with you, even if you're not looking for a relationship. But I do think if you're looking for somebody a bit more traditional in marriage, looking for commitment, interested in staying in the Philippines long term anyway, then people are looking for a unicorn, you're probably more likely to find it in the Philippines than in the West. And I was watching somebody's video earlier relating to um, how this guy was anti MGTOW because his view is that people should adapt um, to accommodate. And I want to just put something out there. The reality is a lot of women don't know what they want. So how can you adapt? You know, that, that, that that's a reality for you. It's why people will talk about they want a man in touch with his emotions, but at the same time be more macho. Well, they don't go together in, unless it's normally a guy that's interested in other guys. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's not... They don't blend. It's like, you know, and the emotions thing is more of a, a female thing. It's alright to be having a hard day or whatever, but most guys are quite happy just going on doing their own thing. They're not really... They're not really supposed to be sitting there weeping on a pillow or something. That's not, that's not what most guys do. Not most guys I know. Um, because the whole point is they're supposed to be a pillar of strength, not a pillar of weakness. So, yeah, maybe I'm too traditional. Maybe that's my problem. I mean, I don't know. I don't know on that one. But the, the whole point of this goes, oh, you just adapt, you do this, do that. I'm like... And the one thing he did mention was needing coaching for relationships. You don't need coaching for relationships. Um, and I would recommend that if you believe that you're in a position of weakness, um, find yourself vulnerable or weak in comparison to women, then you need self-esteem. It's not about you finding this um, other person out there. It's about dealing with yourself first. Give yourself some strength. Um, my wife will tell you, my exes will tell you, I'm an independent guy. I was happy. Um, at the same time, I always look after my own. At the end of the day, I look after my wife, look after my kids, um, I look after my mother-in-law, my my father and whatever, he's, he's the same. He can look after himself. I don't need to get involved with what my father's doing. Um, but beyond that, you've got to be able to stand on your own two feet. Now, a lot of the self-help stuff out there is focused on finance. And I don't know if it's worth me focusing on other things because um, it may actually be worth me looking into things I can help guys with that relate to being a bit more strong-willed and dealing with a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff. 
Um, as I mentioned before, when it comes to relationships in offices, even before I was with my wife, I take zero interest in people in the, in the workplace. There's too much cattiness that goes on. And that's not from a position of weakness. It's just been from a position of strength not to get caught up in things. When somebody has an affair with, I mean, like a friend of mine, because I know his wife as well, he had an affair with a receptionist at the, in the workplace. Within four days, every single person knew there because the way they act around each other, but also when they go out for a drink or something, a quiet drink, nobody knows where they are. In a company, people always know where you are. Somebody will bump into you, even if it's on the motorway services. I remember I went four hours south because um, I was going away for the weekend and I'm at the mobile service dropped in from, just to go to the toilet and I bumped in from somebody that I work with that was actually in the area doing sales and you're thinking out of all the you know they get millions of people going through this and they're bumping into somebody from the same office um, but the point being is you need to understand that you've got to value yourself first and push past a lot of this stuff that gets pushed onto us. Because it's a bit like West has tanning, East has whitening soap. A, it's a good monetary thing for these businesses, but B, is to strive in the fact that you're not perfect already. I'm not saying everybody's perfect, but the point is, is trying to feed off your insecurities what I would say is learn to be happy about yourself who cares what other people think if you want to go to the gym go to the gym but it shouldn't be to uh, make others happy it's to make you happy um, being content with life is important because why else are we here I mean when you if you die tomorrow and you lived your life to keep others happy over that time period what have you learned from it well a, you'd be dead, but uh, ultimately, you haven't lived the life that you wanted. You haven't enjoyed it the way you should have or wanted to. So I do recommend, if you are like this guy was, actually needing coaching and relationship, he needs to recognize the first problem is he's obviously insecure enough to require that. Now, if you're actually saying, well, I need to reprogram myself on how to treat women or whatever, you probably don't. A lot of this is where people are reprogramming people on something they can sell. Self-helping starts with recognizing your own problems, then focusing on those. From myself, I know I'm very blunt. I mean, in some of the business stuff I deal with, I do get people tell, tell me that people do find me intimidating. But at the same time, the reason I do the stuff I do is because I get the job done. That's why I'm involved in it. But I do recognize that I have to separate my home life from my work life for that very reason. Um, I need to come home without any of this stuff from work because you need to separate them. Because you have a different different outlook. It's a bit like getting primed to go on, on stage sometimes. You know, your your focus is like, get get all hyped up and go out there when you're doing a meeting with people that are ceos of a company or the the directors relating to a government body or organization you've got to go in there with confidence you've got to be in there with the right answers you've got to be on top of your game um when you go home you let your guard down you should do that's the whole point it's your place of safety it's your your little castle your realm um but anyway, I've gone completely off tangent. I do apologize for that. But I do recommend taking a look at the Philippines. And there's nearly 2,000 videos on here if you haven't seen any before. Some of them you'll agree with, some of them you won't. The whole point is I just speak from experience, thoughts, other people's experiences, other people's thoughts, and any questions or stuff people send me. Thanks for watching.